This is Morning Prayers at St. Peter's, Ipswich, brought to you online, a place where we study God's Word together and where we join our hearts and our voices before the throne of God, praying for the needs of our world, our church and ourselves. Welcome this morning. Good morning. Welcome to Morning Prayer Online from St. Peter's, Ipsley. My name is Peter McLaren, and I'm a licensed lay minister in this parish. And in our morning prayer today, Wednesday, we're going to use part of the outline from Morning Prayer, Daily Prayer from Common Worship. So, O oh Lord, open our lips and our mouths shall proclaim your praise. The order of service suggests we start with a song of God's glorious name. So we'll use the set psalm, Psalm 8. However, in the daily prayer book, the verse number is different from the traditional numbering, and there are other changes. So I'll be using a traditional modern version. And yes, you can have such a thing. It's the English Standard Version. Star mate. O oh Lord, our God, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You've set your glory above the heavens, out of the mouth of babes and influence, You've established strength because of your foes to still the enemy and the avenger. When I look at your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you've set in place, what is man that you're mindful of him and the son of man that you care for him? Yet you've made him a little lower than the heavenly beings and crowned him with glory and honour. You've given him dominion over the works of your hands. You've put all things under his feet, all sheep and oxen, and also the beasts of the field, the birds of the air, the fish of the sea, and whatever passes along the paths of the sea. O oh Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the world. So the night has passed, and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O oh God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and evermore. Amen. The order of service says that the appointed psalm is to be read. And that is for us, Psalm 34, and it's said to have been written by David at an early stage in his career when he got out of what I would call a nasty spot with the, with the Philistines. And you can read about that, if you wish, in 1 Samuel 21. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul makes its boast in the Lord. Let the humble hear and be glad. O oh, magnify the Lord with me. And let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord and he answered me and delivered me from all my fears. Those who look to him are radiant, and their faces shall never be ashamed. This poor man cried, and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all his troubles. 
The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him and delivers them. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who takes refuge in him. Oh, fear the Lord, all you his saints, for those who fear him have no lack. The young lions suffer want and hunger, but those who seek the Lord lack no good thing. Come, O oh children, listen to me. I will teach you the fear of the Lord. What man is there who desires life and loves many days that he may see good? Keep your tongue from evil and your lips from seeking deceit. Turn away from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. The eyes of the Lord are towards the righteous and his ears toward their cry. The face of the Lord is against those who do evil to cut off the memory of them from the earth. When the righteous cry for help, the Lord hears and delivers them out of all their troubles. The Lord is near the brokenhearted and saves the crushed in spirit. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers him out of them all. He keeps all his bones, not one of them is broken. Affliction will slay the wicked, and those who hate the righteous will be condemned. But the Lord redeems the life of his servants. None of those who take refuge in him will be condemned. And this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our Old Testament reading this morning is a continuation of the story of the building of the temple that we read yesterday. And our reading has left out chapter 4, which is a detailed description of the inner decorations of the temple and the temple furnishings, again made in the best bronze. Bronze, as you may know, is cast at a lower temperature and can be made easier than steel and iron. And so it's a much easier material to work with. And at this time, the nations of the Middle East were moving from the Bronze Age to the Iron. And we can see that in the story of David and Goliath, 1 Samuel 13, and also verses 19 to 22. <laughs> so let's see what happened when the building was complete. Now, reading is 2 Chronicles chapter 5. And I'm going to read, to start with, the first 10 verses. Then Solomon assembled the elders of Israel, all the heads of the tribes, the leaders of the fathers' houses of the peoples of Israel in Jerusalem to bring up the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord out of the city of David, which is Zion. All the men of Israel assembled before the king at the feast that is in the seventh month, and all the elders of Israel came, and the Levites took up the Ark. And they brought up the Ark, the tent of meeting, and all the holy vessels that were in the tent. The Levitical priests brought them up. And King Solomon and all the congregation of Israel who dissembled before him were before the ark, sacrificing so many sheep and oxen that they couldn't be counted or numbered. 
Then the priests brought the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord to its place in the inner sanctuary of the house, in the most high place, underneath the wings of the cherubim. The cherubim spread out their wings over the place of the Ark, so that the cherubim made a covenant above the Ark and its poles. And the poles were so long, that the ends of the poles were seen from the holy place before the inner sanctuary, but they couldn't be seen from outside. And they are there to this day. There was nothing in the ark except the two tablets that Moses put there at Horeb, where the Lord made a covenant with the people of Israel when they came out of Egypt. The bringing of the Ark of the Covenant into the temple. Now, the story of the Ark of the Covenant is actually a very complicated one. It was made of acacia wood and was basically a box just over a metre long, just over half a metre high and half a metre wide. And the detailed instructions on how to make it were given by God to Moses in Exodus 25 when the children of Israel were in the desert. And the ark was kept in the tabernacle, which was itself about the size of a largish bungalow. See Exodus 26, verses 26 to 30. And the whole system was made to be portable, so it could be taken to the different places in the desert where the people were camping. And on entering the Promised Land, the Ark and the Tabernacle moved round until they finished up at Shiloh, where Eli was the priest, and gradually a more permanent structure arose. We see that in 1 Samuel 1, verse 9. Later in a battle, the Philistines captured the ark, 1 Samuel 4, and they took it around their towns, causing disaster to the towns in each case, as 1 Samuel 5 records. And it was finally returned to Israel, where it remained in Kiriath Jerim for 20 years under the care of Abinadab, and we read that in 1 Samuel 7. But King David wanted the ark to be brought up to Jerusalem. We read that in 2 Samuel 6, but it was not carried properly and judgment occurred. So it was temporarily housed in the house of Obed-Edom, the Gittite, who seems to have been a godly man, because he was blessed by God for his labours. And we read about that in 2 Samuel 6.15. Eventually, the ark was brought by David up to Jerusalem and set in a special tent in the city of David. 1 Samuel 6.17. And that brings us to the time of his son. And we read about that in verses 1 and 2. What an occasion! All the elders of Israel came, all the heads of the tribes, the leaders of the fathers' houses, all the men of Israel assembled, and the Levites took up the ark. Verse 5. The ark was placed in the new temple in exactly the right place. Verse 9, the architecture had been done well. And the writer notes that the ark contained the two tablets of stone that the Ten Commandments had originally been written on. We do not know where the two other 
things that were in the ark, in the original ark, that is, a pot of manna, and there Aaron's rod were lost. But the writer to the Hebrews in Hebrews 9 does mention them. So that is the background to the dedication ceremony. But let's hear the story of the ceremony itself. That's verses 11 to 15. When the priests came out of the holy place, for all the priests who were present had consecrated themselves without regard to their divisions, and all the Levitical singers, Asaph, Heman, and Jeduthun, their sons and kinsmen, arrayed in fine linen with cymbals, harps, and lyres, stood east of the altar with a hundred and twenty priests who were trumpeters. And it was the duty of the trumpeters and singers to make themselves heard in unison in praise and thanksgiving to the Lord. And when the song was raised with trumpets and cymbals and other major musical instruments in praise to the Lord, for he is good for his hesse, his steadfast love endures forever. The house, the house of the Lord was filled with a cloud so that the priests could not stand to minister before the cloud because the glory of the Lord filled the house of God. What an occasion! There were the priests, and the priests were actually divided into 24 divisions. We actually can note that from Luke chapter 1 in Zechariah. Normally, only one division at a time was on parade. Here, all 24 divisions, all present and correct. What a number! All the Levitical singers were there. Now, the Levites had been the porters of the tabernacle in the wilderness, and their job seems to have morphed into the temple music group. Seth seems to have been the leader of the singing. He was also a bit of a writer because we read that he actually wrote some psalms, like Psalm 50. And of course, they were all dressed in their number one best, fine linen, verse 12. And then there was the band, with percussion, that symbols, with strings, pops and lyres, and brass, a hundred and twenty trumpets. Can you imagine the noise that made? What a band! What a song! Possibly they were singing Psalm 118 because that starts, Oh, give thanks to the Lord for he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever. All this was done for the glory of the Lord. But something happened. They couldn't complete the service for the glory of the Lord, for something greater happened that, not, that had not occurred since the days of Moses that we read in the end of chapter Exodus 40. The glory of the Lord himself came down and filled the temple. So here they were, doing their musical best for the glory of the Lord, and then came down the glory of the Lord. So may all we do this day 
before the glory of the Lord. And maybe we might be stopped in our tracks because the glory of the Lord himself comes to fill our situation. Amen. We come now to our time of prayers. And again, we're going to use a form of intercession from, more, from daily prayer, suitable for morning prayer. And after each set of petitions, I will give a time of silence for you to bring your individual prayers before God. So that this day and all our days may be full of your praise. We pray to you, O oh Lord, that you would keep us this day without sin. We pray to you, O oh Lord. that we all may walk before you in the paths of righteousness and peace. And also for me, who will probably be teaching refugee children basic English at the very time this is being broadcast. We pray to you, O Lord, that you would bless your people and lift them up forever, especially those who are worried, distressed, sick, or morning. For these we pray to you, O Lord. We pray that you will guide and protect us by your Holy Spirit and bring us with your saints to glory everlasting. We pray to you, O oh Lord. And so we commend ourselves and all for whom we pray to the mercy and protection of God. So we have the special prayer or calling for this week. Almighty God, you alone can bring order to the unruly wills and passions of sinful humanity. Give your people grace so to love what you command and desire what you promise that among the many changes of this world our hearts may surely there be fixed, where true joys are to be found, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit. One God, now and forever. Amen. And let us all, near and far, on our own or watching this with others, join together as our Saviour taught us. So we pray. 
our Father in heaven. Hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. so may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the great blessing brought to us by the Holy Spirit be with us this day and those who we love until we see the glory of the Lord in person. Amen. So, God bless you and be with you in the rest of this day. Goodbye. Mm -hmm.